remember the name. I, I, I work with them. Okay. Oh, well, hey, that's good. It's good, always good to hear. That's one thing that's kind of unfortunate uh, about teaching is after, you know, your, the students move on, um, you don't hear back from them, you know, and, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm always curious to see, to hear what, what, you know, people do after they leave the class. So, um, tell them I said hi. Did anyone email me? Did you email me? Okay, it's, it's not an accusation. <laughs> it's just a question. Yeah, I know, you come in, as soon as you come in, did you email me? You know, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I just, someone, someone had a question, I just wanted to make sure that I addressed it. That's, that's all, you know. Okay, uh, let's take attendance. Uh, let's see. This is Tom. Nicholas. Nolan. Michael. Jordan. Larry. Aaliyah, Ethan, Gabriel, Matthew, Aaron Stark, and Jaden. All right. So, let's pick up where we left off last time. Where we left off last time is, and for those of you that are watching, um, online, um, given that we didn't record the first lecture, uh, this will be the first lecture that we have recorded for you. Um, in a nutshell, make sure that you read through the syllabus, read through the stuff that's in module one, and read the section, well the section under lab assignments is only relevant for the campus-based class, so you don't really need to read that one. Okay. Um, we started off, though, talking about tags in HTML. HTML is the language of web pages. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Hypertext means simply that it's more than just regular text. If you have a web page, there's more on it than just words. All right? The words can be formatted for one thing. And in addition to that, there can also be images, there can be links, there can be other multimedia. And they can be, the, the, the content on the page can be organized as well into sections or whatever. So that's what hypertext means. It means it's more than ordinary text. The markup language relates to how we communicate to the web browser. Again, we view our pages within a web browser. The markup language is how we communicate to the web browser what a piece of text means. In other words, how do we tell the browser? Well, this is a link where this is a heading. This is the title of the page, whereas this is the name of an image that we want to use, and so on. We do that through what are called tags. And we went over a handful of the basic tags on Monday. And so we'll spend a minute reviewing them, and we'll talk about tags in general. And then we'll finish up by talking about some of the other tags that you need to have on every web page. So I uploaded the example, and this is called Fragment. It's called Fragment because this is not a complete web page. It's just a part of a web page. One thing that you need to know is that you need to if you have a web page in a zip file, you need to extract it before you can really work with it. So there I go, I extracted it. And here is my web page within a folder called Fragment. We're going to look at this page two different ways. Now, there's only one file. It's called fragment.html. But we're going to look at it through Notepad++, which is a text editor that you can download for free on Windows. 
and there are similar editors on the Mac if you're using a Mac. And we're also going to look at it uh, from inside the browser. Viewing it in the browser is how the rest of the world is going to see the completed web page when you were to publish it and put it on the web. Notepad++ is sort of an x-ray into the, the innards of the web page, where we get to see all the code that's involved to create the web page. So I can right mouse and say, edit with Notepad++, and here's where I see the tags. Or I can double click on it, and it will bring it up in a web browser. So it's a very simple web page. It is meant to be the description of the CISS programs here at Lorain County Community College. All right. And here's the actual code. Usually when I'm developing a web page, I'll have it open in both. Now it's important to understand, because I usually get a few students every semester that get confused and talk about the two files. The notepad file and the HTML file. There's only one file. All right? I'm just looking at it two different ways. This would be like if, I took a, if someone took a photograph of you and someone took an x-ray of you. Right? There's only one you. Now it's going to look different, the x-ray versus the photograph, because one is the internals of your skeleton and so on. And the other is how the rest of the world sees you. All right? This is how the world is going to see this web page. This is how, this is sort of the skeleton of the web page, the actual code itself that comprises the web page. Now, notice that we have three different tags here. We use the three different tags several different times each. But there's three different tags. There's an H1. An H1 stands for top level heading. Level 1 level heading. That's like the most important level. So if you're making an outline, the outline for this might look something like this. So the outline might look something like this for this web page. Top level is programming, and that's in an H1 tag. Underneath programming, there's two H2, so there's two subtopics underneath that, C Sharp and Java. Underneath web programming, there's HTML, PHP, and ASP.NET. So on the web page itself, that's done via these tags. H1 means it's on the top level. H2 means it belongs to the level 1 that's above it, and so on down the line. All right? Notice a couple things about these tags. All right? These tags come in pairs. Now, there are a few exceptions to this, but for the most part, I'm going to say for now that tags always appear in pairs. There's a starting tag and there's an end tag. All right? The difference between a starting and ending tag is the starting tag has a less than sign, it has the name of the tag, in this case H1, then has a greater than sign. The end tag looks like the start tag, except it has a slash. What that thing is, everything between here and here is treated like it's an H1 tag. All right? Now, the second thing 
about tags is it doesn't matter how much blank space there is between tags or between words in HTML. I put everything on one line. I'm only going to do a few of these. But I could put everything on one line if I wanted to. And it has no impact on the page itself. The browser ignores what is called white space. Um, white space is simply extra space between the words and between the tags. So it doesn't matter that this is all on one line or I can break it down into multiple lines. What you want to do is you want to write your code so it's readable to you. Now, if I had everything strung out on one line, it would be very confusing, especially when we get into more tags and more complicated tags. It would be more confusing for you to read it. And if it's more confusing for you to read it, it's going to be more confusing for you to go back and try to change it if you need to change it later. So therefore, you're going to want to make sure that you do put space between the tags and you don't cram everything together on one line. All right, But the browser, the computer, understands it regardless. It can, it'll figure it out. All right, So that allows you to line things up the way that makes sense for you without worrying about the fact that, well, it might mess up the way the computer is going to display it. So in a minute here, we're going to start indenting tags when they're nested within each other. All right. And that is a very useful tool because that helps you see how the page is pieced together. If tags are indented within other tags, you can see that, hey, this tag is part of that tag. And you can see it at a glance. So right now we have the H1s, we have H2s, and so on. Now, one thing that people often do is they use something when they're first laying out a page they use something called Greek text. All right? Greek text is just like filler text, like stuff like sort of a placeholder, so that you can see how the page lays out without writing all the paragraphs. And then you can go back and fill in the paragraphs later. So I'm going to do that simply because it would be very boring for you to watch me type a paragraph about each of these topics. So I'm going to go to a website. I'm going to Google Greek text. First one on the list. I can generate one paragraph. Actually, I'll generate two paragraphs. Well, we'll generate one paragraph. One paragraph of Greek text. And then I can copy it. And I'm going to put this I'm going to put this as part of my web page. So I don't have to keep in a paragraph for each one of these things. When you're doing your web pages, I want you to use Greek text. Use, I want you to add the paragraphs. But here, in the interest of time, I'm going to use Greek text just so that I give some content to the page without having to spend 20 minutes typing a paragraph. So we look at this now. And here's what the page looks like. Now, there's how the page looks like. So the H1s, if you notice, are the biggest. That's what the H1 means. It means it's the most important heading, and therefore it's going to make the most important heading bigger than the rest of the headings on the page. The H2s are a little smaller because they're of secondary importance. So as a general rule, you show importance by the size of things, right? So these are the most important headings, so they're the second largest. 
and the paragraphs are just plain text, so they're just at a normal font size. And we have paragraphs going down the line for each one. Any questions at this point? Now, one thing about tags that I didn't mention is that tags should be properly nested. And every tag should have a starting tag and an ending tag. What do I mean by properly nested? I mean that if a tag starts inside a tag, it should also end inside the tag. So, in this case, this is not properly nested. Because the H2 tag ends inside the paragraph, but it doesn't start inside the paragraph. So that is not properly nested. If you were to draw a line between these tags, you would see that they overlap. You don't want the tags to overlap like this. So if a tag starts in a tag, it should end within a tag. If a tag ends within a tag, it should start within the same tag. So this is not properly nested. Now, what happens if you break the rules of HTML? Well, that's a really good question. The answer is it depends. Sometimes, if you break the rules of HTML, you don't notice anything wrong. All right? Other times, it's a disaster. All right? It may depend on the specific browser you're using as well, if you break the rule of HTML. It's kind of like if I use improper English. If I said something like, let me see, pick up three, pick up three apple. You know, if there was a bunch of apples on the table, and I said, go up and pick up three apple. I didn't use correct English, right? Because I should say, oh, pick up three apples, all right? Now, because you're a human with judgment, you probably will figure out what I mean. Oh, he meant three apples, not three apple. So you'd go up and pick three of them. But it's possible you might get confused, all right? Especially when you consider that it's not a human with judgment that's displaying this web page but it's a computer that's following a very mechanical set of rules. So when you break the rules of a language like that, maybe it won't matter. Maybe it'll understand what you want and do what you want anyhow. In some cases, though, it might not. So let's see what happens if I make this mistake. What happens to our web page? Well, if you notice, it makes this bigger than it should be. So there was a problem. That should be part of the paragraph. So by not properly nesting, I sort of messed up the content of this page. And if I go and fix this, it'll be correct. There is back to normal. Same thing if I forget an ending tag. If I forget an ending tag, let's say I forget the ending tag for programming. In that case, nothing went wrong. All right? It looks the way that I wanted it to. Now, that being said, you should still follow the rules of the language, because you never know when it could potentially cause problems. So yes? The only reason that it didn't do that is because it started a new tag. Exactly. Exactly. In other words, it was smart enough to know, hey, they started a new H2, so that H1 must have ended. The browser was smart enough to figure that out. But you're absolutely right. OK. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to add the tags to make this a complete web page. If you remember last time I said this isn't a completed web page, this is, this is like 
a fragment of a web page. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the tags to make this a completed web page. And we'll review them. I'll, I'll, I'll type them in. I'll spend a minute explaining the basic purposes, and then we'll talk a little bit more about them. So first of all, first thing on the top of your page isn't really a tag. It's called a declaration. All right? And declaration, because it starts not with the greater than sign, but the greater than sign and then an exclamation point. And then the word doc type. And that is a declaration that tells the web browser that you are using an HTML5 document. Okay? I then have an HTML tag. And the HTML tag goes around everything on the web page. And that simply tells the browser, this is where the web page starts. This is where the web page ends. So there shouldn't be anything after the HTML tag. And the only thing before the HTML tag should be the declaration. Now, if you remember what I said before, it doesn't matter how the page is indented. But I'm going to indent this in a clear way to make it easier for me to read it. So. I'm going to indent to show that these things are inside the HTML tag. So I indent, so at a glance, I can see all this stuff is part of the HTML tag. All right? Believe me, any kind of software you create, web pages, programs in C-sharp or Java or anything like that, one of your goals, besides getting your code to work, you're going you're gonna to want your code to be easy to change because change is inevitable. You know, I sound like a philosopher here, right? Change is inevitable. So much of the expense of any kind of software isn't in the initial writing of it, it's in the maintenance of it. That is, going back and making updates to it. All right. Maybe, for example, Lorraine Community College offers a new program in CISS. Well, we're going to have to go back in to change this web page then to include that new program. We want to make those changes as easy and as simple as possible. One of the main ways you can do that with web pages is by laying out the page, laying out the code in a very readable way. And indenting and putting blank spaces is one way that you can make that page a lot more readable. Okay? So the HTML tag goes around everything in the whole web page. The only thing before it's a doc type, the only thing after it is nothing. There is nothing after it. Every page is divided into two sections, the head and the body. So I'm going to put those tags in. And yes, I'm going to go back and indent the stuff that's in the body. Now, right now, there's going to be one thing in the head. Later on, we'll put other stuff in there. But the only thing in the head is the title of the page. So I'm going to put a title on this page. I'm going to do that with a title tag. And in this case, the page is about 
CISS programs at Lorain County Community College. So I'll make that the title. Everything else is in the body. The body is what's going to appear here in the web page, on the, within the window of the web page. So everything that you want to appear here on this page should be contained in the body. Let's look at where the title goes. The title goes up here on the tab. So if you minimize this and go and look at it, whoops, notice that the title pops up on the tab. Don't confuse a title with a heading, all right? The heading, the H1, appears in the body. The title appears on the tab, all right? And it's good to have both, right? Um, putting the title on there allows people, when they have a bunch of tabs open, to see what's in, in each tab. So at a glance, I can see this is a Google search, this is Lori County Community College, this is the ISS programs at LC. And then the bottom, everything here. So now we have a complete web page. So what we were missing from last time was the document type declaration, the HTML tag, the head tag that contains a title, and the body tag. So those of you that told me that you were done last time and I asked you, did you add the extra tags in? These are the extra tags that you need to add in to complete it. So it's not too much more for you to do. Now, remember I said it doesn't matter how things are laid out, but I chose to indent it to make it clear. Notice that the HTML tag is all the way to the left. The head and body are part of the HTML tag, so I indented those. This is part of the head, so I indented that. All this is part of the body, so I indented that. Remember, you don't have to do that, but it's a good idea to make your code as clean and as readable as possible so that you can easily go in and make the changes. Like I said before, this could all be on just one line one line a thousand characters wide and the computer would be able to read it the browser would be able to interpret it and as long as you follow the rules of HTML it would display it the way you wanted to but that would be very difficult for you to read and more important it would be very difficult for you to change and therefore we make our code neat we indent stuff in a way that's going to make it readable now some of it is up to your judgment, right? What's readable for you might not be as readable for me. For example, this title tag here. Notice that the whole title tag's on one line. I did that because it's, it's pretty short, right? You could also do it like this if you wanted to, though. Is that more readable than the way it was before? I don't know. I'm not going to bicker if you do it one way versus the other way, because you made an attempt to make it as readable as you possibly can. And it's not going to have any difference. It's not going to care. Displays it exactly the same way. Yes? Yes. That should actually be a slash HTML. Yes, because remember, tag comes in pairs, starting tag with the ending tag. Now, we talked about nesting before, and again, we saw a case where the nesting mattered. There are other times when the nesting won't matter, but you still want to follow proper nesting because 
that could potential, that has the potential for causing problems in other situations. It's like this. is not proper nesting. It's one reason I do the indenting, right? Because indenting makes it easy to see that it's not nested properly. Now in this particular case, it doesn't really have an impact on it. If I were to do this though, If I were to mess up and put the end title tag here, let's say, notice what happens. I actually lost some of the stuff. Why did I lose it? Well, the browser thinks that all this stuff is part of the title. And therefore, it puts it part of the title, even though you can't see it. It puts it as part of the title. And if it's part of the title, it's not going to show it in the body. Here's a mistake that usually one or two students do each semester. What if you forget the end title tag? What do you think is going to happen? Let's think about it for a second. Sort of come up with your answer in your head, then we'll see if that's the case or not. If you forget the end title tag, the page disappears. And again, this causes panic for students because they say, where'd my page go? All right. Can someone explain to me why the page disappeared? It's all in the title. The browser thinks the entire web page is title. And therefore, it tries to cram everything. Look, it tries to cram everything up there as part of the title, and it can't do it, all right? And therefore, there's nothing in the body. The bottom line for this is if your page doesn't work, and it looks like a disaster, it might not be a huge problem. It might just be a couple things, one or two things that you forgot. So don't panic, all right? What if I spell title wrong? What do you think is going to happen there? Same thing, because the browser is looking for an end title tag. This is not an end title tag, and therefore, it's going to say, well, I'm looking for the end title tag, and it's not going to find it, so it's going to do that. The bottom line is when you break the rules, you don't know what you're going to get, for sure. The browser is going to take a shot at displaying the web page. It's not going to blow up, like in Visual Basic or C Sharp or Java. If you make a syntax error, if you don't follow the rules of the language, and you try to run your program, It'll just blow up and not do anything. And HTML is a little more forgiving in some respects. If there's a problem, it won't necessarily blow up, but it may also not give you the results that you want. Therefore, it's important for you to follow the rules, and that will cover most of your bases. Any questions about this part so far? Okay. Next thing to talk about is we can divide the page into sections. All right. And there are you know, four or five different ways that you can divide the page into sections. And that's what I'm going to do now. By the way, what I have right here is sort of the bare minimum for a web page. Because it has the HTML tag, has a head tag, has a title tag, has a body tag, has stuff in the body. Some of the stuff that we're going to talk about now is a good idea to have, but it's not absolutely essential. 
One of the things is, is you can create sections for your page. Pages often are divided into sections. If you look at any website, you'll see there's a navigation section on the top, there's a section for this stuff, a section for this stuff, section for this stuff, section here, section here, and so on down the line. So we're going to divide our page into sections. And today we're going to talk about Today we're going to talk about three of the sections that you can use, three of the uh, areas that you can use on your web page. And they are the header, an article, and a footer. These are three common groups, ways of organizing your page, things that you might have on your page. So for example, on this web page, let me correct this. The header would sort of be a banner on top of the page. The header for a web page usually has stuff like this in it like a banner that tells you what the organization is, um, maybe something like the search bar, and maybe some other things. But that's the banner or the header of the page. The footer is at the bottom of the page. Like this would be like a footer of a page. It's important information, but information that they don't necessarily want to make very prominent and in your face. And then finally, each section could be considered an article. All right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put these tags in. I'm going to create a banner for the page that would contain maybe things like Elsie's logo. Maybe just the words, and so on. Again, this is different than the title, right? Because this is going to appear in the body of the web page. So that's my header. We have an article about programming. Where I have all the stuff about programming. And again, indent this to make it neat. So I can tell at a glance that all this stuff is in the programming article. I'm going to have a article about web programming. We have an article about mobile development. And finally, I'm going to have an article about networking. And 
And then I'm going to have a footer. And maybe it's going to contain something like the email address of the person who manages the website or a copyright notice or something like that. Right now, we'll just put a copyright notice in it. And if you notice this, when we're done, if we look, it doesn't really make the page look drastically different. I mean, sure, there's the new stuff that I put in, the header and the footer. But if you look, the rest of the page doesn't look drastically different. Yes. Um, is the HTML case sensitive? Is the HTML case sensitive? No, it isn't. Okay. All right. So in other words, everything that I typically use lowercase for everything. So I make my tags lowercase. Uh, but you could make them uppercase if you wanted to. Uh, my only re or request would be to be consistent. If you, if you use uppercase, don't mix and match upper and lowercase. Use, pick, pick the one that you prefer and then just use that one. Now, this didn't make a huge difference in the way the page looks, but later on, probably next week, when we study styling, when we introduce cascading style sheets, and we can put different colors and borders and other stuff on the page, that's when it's going to matter. Because we can make the header maybe have a border around it. We could make the footer maybe have a border around it. We could make each article have a different background from the other stuff on the page. Maybe, maybe the background for all, all articles is a light gray to make those stand out a little bit, and so on. So the things that we're doing now really are just logically or organizing our page. It doesn't really change the appearance until we start styling. The page, the appearance of the page depends on two things. The default appearance of the HTML tags and any cascading style sheet that we write. So right now, we have no CSS, no cascading style sheet code in our page. And therefore, this page is simply the defaults. The default color for a web page is typically white. The, the default font color is typically black. The default font that's used is typically Times New Roman, at least on a Windows machine. All right? And the, font, the default font size is this size. All right? So until we go and we change that via the CSS, it's going to just follow the defaults of the browser. So right now, it doesn't appear that there's any advantage of organizing our page into a header, into a footer, and into articles. But that will become apparent when we start styling stuff, what the advantage is. Because if we have it organized that way, we can put visual cues to help our users understand the way the page is organized. All right? And once we do that, that will be... Um, um, a pretty good thing. Now there are a few other divisions or sections of the program. How many of you have done any web development prior to this class? Okay, a few of you. Uh, if you did not use HTML5, you may have used the div tag a lot. In That was the tag that was used in HTML4. Div tags really aren't used anymore now because the div tag has sort of been enhanced by all these other ways of making your page into a section. All right? So uh, instead of a div tag for your heading and a div tag for your articles, there's now a heading in articles. There's actually several more sections that we will talk about, just not today. There is a section that 
there is an aside, and there is a nap. A section is like an article, but it's more generic. Like if you had a collection of photos, you might not really consider that an article. Usually we think of words with an article, but it might be your photo section of the page. An aside is when you have an article that's sort of related to another article. You know, if there was an article about um, the Super Bowl, there might be an aside article that talks about the city that the Super Bowl's in. So it's not part of the main article, but it's like a related item of interest. And then finally, the navigation is for your links, your navigation to get you around the page. Okay. What you need to do in your first assignment is to do a web page very similar to the one that I have here, except it will have the topics that are included in the lab. Okay? Any questions about this? All right. Uh, that's all I had today. We'll see you up in lab. Remember, if you finish the lab, give me a call to come over and take a look at it, and I'll grade it and give you feedback right on the spot. All right, see you up in lab.